What's up, guys? Welcome to my channel, Brian Talks Baseball, where I'm Brian and I talk about baseball. Today, we're talking about the best pitchers of our generation. Who are they? Before I get into it, um, I want to talk about like my methodology a little bit. So there's a couple things I was considering when I was compiling this list. One is how long was their period of greatness? I think that's obviously super important. Um, the quality of their greatness, right? You know, one guy had a better peak over another. That's that's important too. What I consider recent greatness, right? Um, is the pitcher not? Did the pitcher not only have a great peak, a long peak, but are they still great? And then the last thing I considered was the possibility for future greatness, right? If a guy, you know, not only had a great peak, a long peak, still good, is going to continue to be good. Um, I think those are all the factors we need to consider if we're talking about something like the pitcher of our of our generation, right? Number five, I have Steven Strasburg. I know that might be kind of a strange pick for number five because he just he doesn't have the volume of innings as some of the other guys on this list or some of the other guys that you would consider for this type of discussion. But on a rate basis, Steven Strasburg was just as good as anybody else in the 2010 decade. Um, like I said, the lack of volume, the injury history, that thing works against him. We're talking about a guy who just had the best year of his career this past year in 2019. Um, and also he's only 31. So if we're talking about the possibility of future greatness, um, I think Steven Strasburg might come out of this list being the best pitcher post 2019. I think that's important. That's why I want to put him on this list. Like I said, because of the things working against him, I don't think I can put him higher than five. But Steven Strasburg, very under, underrated pitcher in the 2010 decade. Number four, I have Chris Sale, and I think he could be higher on this list if not for a few things. His first two years, he worked as a reliever, which is, you know, fine, whatever. If he was in full health in 2019 and didn't need to undergo Tommy John surgery this year, you know, he's not going to pitch this year. He's not going to pitch for probably half of next year. I think all that works against him. But I mean, from 2012 to 2018, you know, this guy was as good as anyone and again with him too he's he's only 31 years old too so again if we're talking about like Strasburg the possibility of future greatness and then Chris Sale could end up being just as good as Steven Strasburg in that regard and his 2019 season wasn't as bad as you think I mean even not at full health even losing the velocity in his fastball he was still pretty good so there's some chance with some rest and as the past the surgery you know he, he comes back bounces back um, I'm not gonna say he's gonna come back stronger because he's gonna be 32 33 but um, there's definitely a possibility where, you know, Chris Sale can have another period of greatness. Number three is Clayton Kershaw. Now, if you were to just isolate the 2010 decade, right, Clayton Kershaw, number one in Fangraphs War, number one in ERA, um, I think that, like I said, if you were just to isolate that decade, I think Clayton Kershaw is was the best pitcher. But a couple things working against him is, like I said, a couple things I want to consider were the recency of his greatness and the possibility for future greatness. So even though Clayton Kershaw was so good and so dominant for that period of time, we've kind of already seen his decline, right? Um, he's not the pitcher anymore that he used to be. He's still very good, still very reliable. We're not talking about like a Felix Hernandez type of drop-off here, but... Um, Definitely is not the pitcher that he used to be, and I think that that works against him. And I think that when you when you start to adjust for things like park factor and uh, run scoring environment, that those things matter. And when you look at those stats, um, it definitely closes the gap a little bit. He's no longer so much better than the field when you look at those numbers. And I think that's important to consider too, because the the next two guys I'm going to talk about. Um, weren't that much worse than him overall in the 2010 decade, um, but are much better now and will continue to be much better. So with that said, number two, I've got Max Scherzer. For the 2010 decade, Scherzer's actually number two behind Clayton Kershaw and War. Um, he's not too far behind. The difference in why I give Scherzer the nod over Kershaw as far as like number two over number three is because Scherzer is still so great. This year in particular was his seventh year in a row with at least 5.6 war or higher. So, you know, he's he's still in his peak, and there's not really anything that tells me that he's slowing down, and I think that's the difference. So even though Kershaw may have had a higher quality peak, um, Scherzer's still in it. Like, it can go for another two or three more years, and I think, you know, that's important, again, we're, when we're considering the, the, the picture of the generation, type of discussion his period of greatness did start a little bit later 
than Kershaw's. Um, not to penalize Kershaw for being great, you know, sooner than Scherzer, but um, like I said, you know, Kershaw's peak was actually relatively short. Number one is Justin Verlander. Now, as far as the 2010 decade, I know I keep talking about that. Um, as far as Fangraphs war, you know, Kershaw was number one, Scherzer was number two, Verlander was actually number three. Um, I think the difference here and the reason why I'm putting him number one here is because we talk about one, the length of the period of greatness, right? And Justin Verlander went into the 2010 season already with almost 20 war, right? So not only did he already have, you know, a lot of great innings under his belt, but he was still, you know, comparably good, as good as those guys throughout that entire decade. And um, he's still, he's still really good. Um, you know, he just won the Cy Young. I don't put a ton of stock in Cy Young awards, Um because really he should have more than two. He should probably should have four or five. Um, but again, if we're talking about recent greatness and we're talking about the possibility of future greatness, I think the, in the last two or three years, Scherzer has been better than Verlander. But the difference here is that with Scherzer, you're kind of starting to see the injury concern. We saw it a little bit in 2019, only made 27 starts, um, you know, less than 180 innings. You started seeing the playoffs too. They pushed the start back to Game 7. That Game 7 start, he was, you know, he was good on paper. He went five innings, but just didn't really look like himself. Um, so that's kind of what I worry about with Justin Verlander. By any metric you look at, whether it's his advanced rate stack, his stack has pitch repertoire numbers, stuff like that, um, his batted ball metrics, all of those things, um, this guy could be elite for three, four, five more years. Um, and it's crazy to say that he's going to, he might be the best pitcher past 2019 on this list because he's 37 years old he's the oldest guy on this list um and i think that's crazy um so yeah justin verlander best pitcher of our generation so that about wraps this up for this video guys um if you enjoyed this video definitely please subscribe to my channel definitely leave me a like um follow me on twitter i'll put a link in the description i plan on making more videos about things like sabermetrics comparative analysis player profiles stuff like that um so let me know in the comments one if you agree is do you think justin verlander is the best pitcher of the, of the generation if you don't agree cool tell me why i'm happy to you know engage in a nice debate with you guys um also what are some things you want to hear me talk about uh, like I said, I want to focus on sabermetrics with this channel. Um, if there's something you want to hear me talk about, drop that in the comments. I'd love to get to it. Um, I want to make this channel for you as much as I want to make it for me. So, um, again, thanks for stopping by. See you next time.